When some jack wagon is trying to steal your stuff, you gotta use every advantage you can. I'm John Correa, the founder and owner here at Active Self Protection. Thanks for joining us for today's lesson. It comes to us from Bristol in England. The new Mantis X10 firearms performance system has all the goodness of the original, plus holster draw analysis and recoil analysis. It's a fantastic upgrade and I recommend it highly. Dude's just rolling in his scooter here when another guy comes up and actually hits him with what turns out to be a stolen scooter. Go read the news story linked in the description. And so you got three robbers on two bikes here and they start beating on this guy trying to steal his scooter. And we're gonna see another, you know, the first guy come in and try to take his scooter and our guy is going to try to stop them. Now it's a three on one, just got kicked in the face and hit with what looks like a baton or a stick to me, but he's wearing full gear. So he's gonna get back off that, keep this guy from, from hurting and taking away his stuff, punch the other guy at least once, come back around here, and now it's like the three stooges here, dude's hitting him with a baton or like I say, with a stick or something like that. And again, looks like our, uh, our victim has gotten a hold of their stick or baton and is now holding, using that to hold these guys off. And they keep kind of coming his way, but he's not gonna let him grab his stuff. And so what ends up happening, these dudes jump on that one scooter. So he actually did not only prevented them from stealing his scooter, but got another scooter back. And that's where this one ends. Boy, I sure appreciated how much fire that guy had. If you want to get better as a self-defender, join us on our Facebook page. Open your Facebook app, search Active Self Protection, hit that like button. We share stuff there from all over the web every single day, and it helps you get better as a self-defender. Hope to see you there. Gutsy performance here. Let's think about how this one starts. As our guy looks like he's moving kind of towards the left. Again, this is in England. They ride on the left side of the road. So he's kind of staying out of the way because this guy is, notice he is crossing the middle of the divide there and coming his way. One of the ways that is a pre-attack indicator might give you a second or two of advance notice is recognizing when somebody is making a beeline for you rather than avoiding you, which you'd expect them to do on the road. When he is heading at you, that is an indicator bad stuff's happening. And that's exactly what goes down here. Dude comes up and actually, you know, runs his moped into him to try to get his stuff. Now, let's think about this. You're trying to orient yourself to this problem. Dude has just hit me with his scooter. Now I got other guys, bunch of dudes jumping off. What am I going to do? And also notice here, you have multiple attackers, at least two attackers with a third potential. And we know at least one of them we're going to find out is armed. So multiple attackers, very difficult, requires a high level of skill. But what does our guy have as an asset? He is wearing the gear. Notice this guy's hitting him with the helmet multiple times, but it's not really doing a whole lot to him. Why? Because he's wearing a riding jacket. He's wearing a helmet. He's wearing heavy boots. He's wearing gloves, which is why for all my friends in the wind, it's another advantage to making sure that you wear all the gear all the time. Of course, the main advantage, you want to dress for the slide and not for the ride and all that stuff. But if God forbid something bad happens, you're wearing all the protective gear. Somebody takes a swing at you. It's really not that big a deal because it can't really hurt you. Okay, fine. We see that here, but he's still got to deal with the fact that this guy is stealing his moped. And I do like the fact here that he went a little bit away from this guy and stacked them between him. So when you're facing multiple attackers, this is actually a pretty good strategy to stack them one behind the other so that only one can attack you at a time. It's a savvy, empty-handed skills tactic, in fact, that I don't know if he did on purpose, but right now he's just kind of buying himself a moment to say, man, get away from me, dude. You know, stay off me with that bat or whatever, because you can see him hitting him with that. But now when the guy is going to steal his stuff again, he gets after him. Now, I do notice here that at this point, because he fell on the ground, the guy kicked him with his foot. That's when things could get a little south here when you kick with a shod foot, especially even wearing a full face helmet, you might get that, that uh, boot or whatever inside of your visor. That could be a pretty significant problem. So one of the reasons we say, hey, you wanna stay on your feet if at all possible in a defensive encounter. So he gets back up pretty quick here. And now again, we've got, look at the bystanders here who are just kind of standing around with no help whatsoever. I do wanna note, you're on your own, even if there are other people around because they kind of try to intervene, but they don't really have any ability and therefore he's on his own. Now you see him grab a hold of the stick here and then start throwing punches. So at the very least, this guy has finally oriented himself to say, no, these guys are not gonna take my bike. They are not gonna get after me like this. And he has literally taken that baton away from the first guy and punched the second guy. Is that reasonable? It's absolutely reasonable. These guys are trying to steal his stuff and they've assaulted his person, multiple attackers here. I think if this is in the United States, Dude armed with a baton, multiple attackers, he's probably justified in drawing a firearm here. Of course, he doesn't have one because it's England. 
But now notice he has the baton. So now what? Now we have a disparity of force on their part because they have multiple attackers, but he has even the odds because he's a tool user. So this is why I say carry all the best tools on you that you possibly can. The reason is because it'll make even multiple attackers think twice about attacking you because you have the ability to do more force than they do individually. That's a good thing. This is why good people should carry force multipliers and why I recommend them. So notice here he's going to get after this guy. Now you might say, hey, wait a minute, that guy was trying to run away, but given the totality of the circumstances, I don't know that he was, and I don't know that we could prove that. So instead, this guy's still trying to defend himself against all these people, and, and so I don't have any problems with that. And thankfully, because he had a great attitude, because he had enough skills to back it up, he had all the gear on, so he wasn't taking abuse, and then he disarmed the second guy and got that back in the fight. He drove them off. Final thing, I do want to remind you again, Notice at this point, there are at least six people who are watching him fight and watching him fight against multiple attackers. And they're all kind of standing around going, oh no, what do we do? No one is coming to help you, friend. If by some means a bystander comes to your aid and gets into the fight and helps, well, hey, that's a bonus. But never think that that's going to happen as a regular basis. Instead, make sure you understand you are the primary agent in your own rescue as you seek to cover your ASP.